All right, what do we got there, Peach? You went to, what was it? Over at Nick's Sports Cards. They All had right. a bunch of packs of random cards. I found one of the Orlando Magic. Of course, we got to buy it because, duh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 20 bucks. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried, too, based on some of the pricing I saw there. But yeah. What the hell? We're rolling the dice. Yeah, we got it. There's one card in here. There's one card? There's one card. Oh, that's... Bo that's... It's numbered to 49. Okay. But get this. Okay. We already have this card. <laughs> so we now have two. Oh. A 49. A local product here in <sighs> Dallas. RJ Hampton. Saw him the other day. Could have gotten his autograph if I wanted. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Court Cousins episode 62. My name is Kyle. I'm joined as always by my dashing cousin, Jason the Peach. Extendo. There he is. What do we got today, Peach, on today's show? Let the people know. Well, we got a psychological check-in coming up as always. Started off and we've got the uh, social media roundup. And then we've got five with a fam today. One nice. of our Patreons is going to be calling in and joining us on the show. And then, of course, the large ending, as always, which is big, juicy, and the end of the show, as named. <laughs> <laughs> going to be a good show. Before we get into any of that, want to shout out our patrons over on the Patreon. Shout out to all the all-stars and second cousins over there. Magic Player History, Bolby the Don, Paulo and Franz's Warmth, Dylan Holden, Drum Drum, Drummy Drumble D, Matthew Bell, Dan Young, Gloria and Damien, and Connor. Thank you very much to everyone who financially supports the show. It's tax time, and I'm going through and just realizing how much money, just the little things that we spend on the show out of our pockets. So you help to just help it break even and continue to bring content to you all. Five dollars, you know, a month if, if you can. Helps to uh, keep this going and, and get that magic content out there because you know we can't tr trust these national media types, Peach. They just don't know what's going on with the Orlando Magic, so we have to set them straight. Yeah, that wasn't a political take, but it does hold true in both yeah. circumstances, doesn't it? <laughs> well, like people in, are up in arms on Magic Twitter now. It's like, why don't people cover the Magic more? And then when they do, they're like, they don't cover the team right. It's like, well, what do you, what do we want here? What <laughs> do we want them to cover it, or do they need to have everything accurate? Because if you want accuracy, I don't know if this is the show for you either. We're just here to have a good time. I think uh, once. That, you know, I think maybe next season more yeah. mainstream media will commit people to watching our cause. But I think before now, we haven't really warranted anybody paying attention. We've been smart because we're watching and we see that it's coming. Yeah. But they're not going to really spend a lot of time on it's coming when you, you know, you're a 20, 30 win team. They're, they're not interested in that. So that, that's when you go to your podcast shows like us because we've got that info. Because we have been watching and we'll be watching in t about 11 days, Peach, I believe, from the recording of this episode, we will be down for Court Cousins Night Thursday, March 21st. Uh, we'll be in the building. We're going to be doing all types of giveaways. We're giving away this Paulo Bancaro jersey. It's it's show worn now. It's game worn, Peach. This, we've got a few more jerseys to give away. One, one Paulo Bancaro jersey is going to be given to the first five people who buy tickets. Last I checked, I think we had four people, so we're waiting for one more person to buy tickets. And then you have a 20% chance of winning a Paulo Bancaro jersey. We're going to go on the court after, cut down the net. We'll all be sitting together in the same section. It's going to be a blast. And on today's show, something very special, Peach. We're giving away two tickets right now to that event. Oh. Two tickets. So all you got to do is you got to be subscribed to the channel and you have to comment on this episode and you will be entered to win two free tickets to Court Cousins Night on Thursday, March 21st. So please do that and you know just buy your tickets anyway. If you win the free tickets, then you can give them to a friend and you can pay it forward. And it's like a good magic kumbaya mm -hmm. moment. Yeah, it helps if you're within driving distance, but man, we had some people fly out last year, right? So, I mean, like, uh, depends on how much money you're willing to drop to have a good time, I guess. Yeah, dang. Um, oh, what was the homie who fl he won the tickets and then he's like, fuck it, I'm flying out. I'm coming from Cali. Him and his boy came through. 
I don't want to. I thought it was a Chris Aaron. I, I forget. Comment it. Let us know in the comments, homie. I remember your your username, but not your actual name. It's been a year, and you know, the the devil's led us from in, in between. You know, the memory is not as good. I say that. I'm just glad you remember the moment. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I think. I say I always joke like it's the devil's led us, but I just I'm realizing that my memory just isn't made like that for names. I, I do remember moments, and I remember how I felt with people, uh, for sure. So, anyways. Mm -hmm. Neither here nor there. Ticket giveaway. Subscribe, comment. You'll be entered to win. We'll announce it um, in about a week on social media, and we'll reply to you in the comments. So there it is. We hope to see you there. Please buy the tickets because it's it's coming up 11 days away. We want to have as many of you there to hang out. I'd like to lead into the psychological check-in. I'm going to okay. throw it to you, but okay. I actually was met with this question by a gentleman that I work with. His name mm. is Dwight. He came over to a pile of us that were gathered by my desk and he said, Hey, how are you guys doing on a social emotional check-in level? You can give me on a scale of one to five. And then he went around and he had, you could uh -huh. tell that the other guys were not ready for this. Okay. I was ready. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I actually, ready, I would prefer on the scale of a Cole Anthony, but uh, I've checked in before. I know how this is done. <laughs> he happened to hit me on the day that the uh, piece aired on uh, Good Morning Texas. Oh, okay. And it was also pay day. So I checked in at a 4.5, oh. which, you know, was pretty solid. It's a strong but it was number. interesting to see that happen in a place that wasn't this show. Because mm. no, other than that, there's not usually a lot of check-ins. But it, it, was, it was fun. Yeah. It was interesting to see how the other guys felt. I recommend giving it a try. If you feel like you won't get laughed out of your office, let just go for it. Just check in. That's check why in we do people, it. See what's, right. see what's up. Absolutely. Um, and, and so, I, therefore, I throw to you, sir, and see mm -hmm. how you're doing for your psychological check. And I, I see what it looks to be a familiar picture here. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I you have kind of a, a limited cash to, to choose from yep. of Cole Anthony pictures. This is taken from one of his vacations. He's got uh, the shades on. But I chose this one because it looks like – he was taking a slumber and he's like just waking up. He's kind of peering out of his mm. eyes. I don't know if he's looking into the sun or it looks like he woke up from a nap, but I'm taking it uh, the interpretation of the latter. You know, I'm, I've just been exhausted, man. Um, one of my good friends is going through a difficult life moment and I've been you know, holding a lot of space for him and being really supportive with him. And Nadra had kind of a down week last week. And then on top of that, holding space for kids who – you know, kids continue to make some of the same mistakes over and over. I think the diff most difficult part about being a teacher is kids continue to make the same mistakes uh, in the face of the best advice, the most calm and patient conversations that you can have with them. Um, they're just They're, they're going to keep making errors. And that's just how you learn as a human sometimes, <laughs> navigating <laughs> what it is to be humans and um, yep. being in relationships. And at that time, especially when – you're figuring out who you are. So my emotional battery was just super duper low. I wasn't getting a lot of sleep, but I got a bunch of sleep last night. So this is me kind of like waking up from a slumber. I'm feeling well rested today. And I really badly needed that rest because as I said, my emotional battery was at a low. I am going to have some friends over today just for some male bonding time, not bondage time, male bonding time. That's a different thing. Um, we're just going to hang out and that, that does tend to recharge my battery. So I'm, uh, I'm a little dazed, but I'm coming out of a good slumber and I, I'm feeling like I'm on the up right now. Peach. I'm on the up. Mm. I heard, right. I heard a little bit of a chuckle out of you when I was talking about uh, teaching people things over and over. So I don't know if that's going to play into your psychological checking, but how the hell are you? No, no. I just think that like, I know neither one of us are parents, right? But if you've right. ever talked to any parent, they would echo that sentiment, right? I know I've heard my mom say that about me several times, like, holy crap, he's just got to learn for himself and in his own, on his own. And that's frustrating as a parent or anyone who's trying to teach someone something that you just kind of want them to you know, they're going to have to make their own mistakes and learn from it. And that's, that's tough to watch when it's someone you care about or you're trying to help out. So I, I understood. That's kind of why I laughed. Cause I was like, yeah, Hey man, I think everybody can identify with that at some point in their life. So how I doing? also need a June. I need a Juno check-in first. Yeah. <laughs> how's he, how's he doing? Oh, Oh, Juno. Okay. Dang. I just, uh, um, Juno is, that's my cat for anyone just checking in. He's on this medication. He hates the, he hates the medication. I have to you know, shoot it down his mouth every once a day. Um, he hates it. The thing that's toughest for me with that relationship is a lot of times when he sees me coming now, he's a little bit trepid. He's oh. not sure. 
and he he will sometimes make motion to run under the bed. Um, mm. So that kind of hurts me as as a cat dad to like see. Right. He was always like my, the snuggly guy. Like he would come over and he was just very loving. And sometimes he's a little he's a little distant at times now because of that. But hey, he's alive. He's hanging out. We got him a new cat bed. He's enjoying it. So he he's good. That everything is stable right now and good news. Thanks for thanks for checking in about that, Peach. But uh, what's your psychological check in? Okay. I just teased the photo by accident because I thought you were going into okay. it for a moment. But but here uh, it well, is again. Well, here, yeah, here it is. Um, what's going on? This this is a uh, this is a theme of uh, not being prepared. Um, <laughs> And in many ways, uh, this is actually a Cole Sprouse, not Anthony Cole, but it oh. is technically a psychological check-in. <laughs> who's, um, who's a you Cole may Sprouse? know him from Zach. You may know him from Zach and Cody, the Sweet Leg of Zach and Cody, okay. or uh, maybe Riverdale. A couple of the main things he's been in. Um, but here he is being unprepared to take a selfie where his butt was exposed. I've uh, I've decided to uh, edit that out with the Washington Wizards because you know. <laughs> their their ass um and uh but this this was kind of me uh, i woke up this morning kind of forgot that it was time to do a show and just was not at all prepared to the point where i type in to look for a coal picture and i just typed coal and this was one of the ones that came up so uh <laughs> as it turns out the interweb does not put coal anthony first in searches even though it's my computer it probably ought to go ahead and fill that in for me but it didn't and it's just just a, a point from unpreparedness but i will say this well i i was a little unprepared for the show it's not the first time i always pull it together i have faith in me um <laughs> but but outside of the preparing for the show i did have a very good prepared for myself for two weeks mm. um i had a big i've had a big month and a half on ebay over a thousand bucks in sales trying to make some extra money to be able to go on this trip that we're going on yeah. um, so i'm fi financially getting a little bit more stable in the last couple of weeks partly because i've been at work a lot and there's no time to go spend any money <laughs> uh but yeah just a good time had by all and my phone is ringing and i realize that's unprofessional i'm sorry <laughs> oh. normally i have it on silent it's perfect <laughs> but, for the uh, for this check-in right now <laughs> Right. Yeah. It's just, it's matching, it's matching everything. Um, so two, these past two weeks just flew by. I feel like we just did a show. Um, yeah. and yeah, here we are again. And like, I didn't even get a chance to see the Knicks game last night and I wanted to watch it, but there was an incident mm -hmm. at work. So, I mean, I'm, I'm unprepared in other areas, but focused on making sure that the things that need to get done, get done. And it's, it's you know you know that's that's life that's the way it goes right you got to prioritize yeah. stuff sometimes here it is um i'm it's fine that you didn't watch the that game last night i don't want to talk about it at all okay okay <laughs> sweet <laughs> um i didn't even watch the fourth quarter i'm not sure we we ended the game with 74 points Pisha. i don't know if you saw that we, I saw the, we, saw ended, the score. The, I was... we ended a four quarter nba game with mm -hmm. 74 points and paulo yes. bancaro scored 23 of those so right. I don't, you know, right. take that with I, what you will. I saw the shooting lines. I saw John Isaac was our third leading scorer with 11. <laughs> I was like, this is not a good night at the office for the squad. I was pissed, man. Everything was looking good for me. I had a Wendell Carter line. I'm like, you know what? I just feel like Wendell's going to get in the bag. He had two you can't early take those threes. Wendell Carter lines unless they're playing the Bulls. It, his, I know, I know. He, he had, you know, his, his over for threes was 0.5. I'm like, nope, I'm getting frisky. I got a, a juicier line. I took over 1.5. First quarter, oh. he nails two. He has like seven oh. points, I think. Uh, and he, I think he ended with that. Like, I needed, I needed 10 and a half points. He got the boards, he got the two threes, and he didn't get the points. And I'm like, man. You had freaking that? seven points in the first quarter. You didn't score the whole rest of the game. I haven't even looked at it. I didn't do a reaction last night. I was just fed up. As I said, it was a tough week, so I, st I didn't even watch the fourth quarter because I'm, I'm not putting myself through this emotional distress. I'm just glad mm -hmm. I was about to pull the trigger on going into New York City and spending like 110 bucks mm -hmm. as the ticket prices were falling towards, the, the, towards okay. tip-off. And I am so glad that I did not. I am sorry for any Magic fans that were in attendance. I saw many of you, uh, many people on Twitter were, you know, those little, like shots before the game where they were like, we're in here. And then, you know, by the second quarter, it was like, I wish you probably wish you were out of there. And we're it was just the an ugly game. Yeah, exactly, man. <laughs> it was an ugly game. So we're not going to talk about it. We're not, we're just not peach. All right. We just did though, but all right. I know. Well, I get, you know, <laughs> Hey, a little something. Um, but I think it's also, it's a little bit of an outlier. I don't want to make too much of it. It was a game 
I'm going to keep talking about it right now. It was a game <laughs> that <laughs> is important, I think. And that's, I was frustrated that we lost because the, a bunch of these games that we've been winning, teams have been kind of injured. They've been, you know, the lower teams. This was an important game the, the Knicks were a half game behind us. It was one of those intense moments where you wanted to see what the guys would do. And everyone except Paulo pretty much just completely shrank from the moment. But I'm just going to put it as an outlier. I think it was our third game in like four or five days. The The Knicks were well rested. They only played Monday and then Friday. So we'll just put it as an outlier and remember that we were 14 and or 11 and four in our last 15. And, and we'll just put it as water under the bridge. Yeah, great teams have a hiccup now and then. Yeah. I mean, the Celtics, you know, we had their number last year that we they probably looked at us as a hiccup. I mean, right. these things happen. It's all good. Well, look, we're only going to do five to ten more minutes on the uh, next <laughs> game, and then we'll move on. <laughs> no, let's go right to social media around that. <laughs> all right, let's start with a heartwarming tale from the Cole, from the psychological check in the Cole Anthony. Uh, this is from Jason Bede. I don't even know how to pronounce his name still. Beedy, I'm not sure. He's the Sentinel uh, beat reporter for the Orlando Magic. Yeah, probably Beedy. Um, he posts uh, that by winning the DeVos Community Enrichment Award, Cole Anthony will be granted $20,000 from the DeVos Family Foundation to uh, for him to donate to a char- charity of his choice. And Cole Anthony donated it to his charity, which is the 50 Waves Foundation, which does a bunch of great work in the community. Namely, he does like the Cole Anthony Christmas. He does um, a couple other uh, giveaways, like back to school stuff. And he also does scholarships for student athletes, trying to remove barriers for kids who may not be able to get into certain programs or go to certain schools. So he's doing a lot of great work in the community and we just needed to give a round of applause to that gentleman that is Cole Anthony. So well done, sir. A bit of lighthearted news here. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, with all the trash talk that fans do to people, if anyone ever trash talks Cole Anthony can calling him a bum or anything like that, you, you don't really know. Because yeah. this guy is is just a, a stellar human being off the court. It's awesome. And also, hey, let's let's give a little shout out to the DeVos family who's come under some fire in the past for things they've donated to. Donating to a great cause here, all right? I mean, uh, sometimes uh, when you fine yes yeah, sometimes when you're making choices they're not always good ones i mean <laughs> mistakes can be made but as long as you're doing some good you know let's not uh let's not completely crap on people it's a good there's a good thing all the way around win for everybody ah uh, i don't know i really want to crap on the devos family i just betsy devos tried to freaking torpedo public education piece as a teacher i just cannot let it stand but you're right Hey, well, she may have had some sort of plan for just all charter schools where people are yeah. paying for people to go to school. That would have put money in your pocket. So it might have not been all a bad thing. Yeah, whatever. I'm not I'm not going to go into a political education debate. If you want to come to Court Cousins Night and get an in-depth conversation <laughs> about education policy, we can go there. For sure. You don't even need to go to the game. Just show up yeah. at the pregame. <laughs> you know what? Let's skip the game. We're really deep in a, a pure people funding right now. Let's talk about it. Do you really think that funding should be attached to property taxes? Let's go. All right. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peach. You put this one on here. We talked about Mac McClung, the dunk contest champion last night, last time from the Osceola Magic. It's been mm. uh, now he's got his own bobblehead, Peach. What do you got on this? Yeah, I see commercials. This bobblehead looks nice, by the way. This is yeah. kind of a public service announcement that I would like one of these bobbleheads. If anyone's got a run on them, uh, I'm willing to put forth some dollars for this. I'm not looking for a free handout. Uh, just I know these are going to be in, in demand supply. I'm looking to change up some okay. stuff behind me here. I need some new swag. Yes. And this is a sweet bobblehead because it's got the rim in there. And, it, and it's Mac approved. Not everybody always approves of their bobblehead, but he was into it. Um, he signed a lot of them for people after the game. I feel like these. this is going to be a cool, rare collector's item that I want on my shelf. Help yeah. me get one. Hell yeah. <laughs> get, help Peach get there. See where they're they, – you weren't able to find where they're available. Do you, do you know what the deal is with them? Oh, they, they gave them out at the game to oh. the people. So it was, a, it was a giveaway. So 
you know, they, they don't have a huge stadium, but right. you know, obviously anyone who went got one. I'm sure most of these people are taking it home. Hell Some yeah. people are probably going to try to resell them on eBay, things of this nature, you know, sometimes yeah, okay. they're around, but you know, when you, if you know somebody who works for the team, cause I know I, you know, if, if you want to do a trade, I got Dallas stars bobbleheads I can hook you up with. <laughs> they always have all that stuff they give away. They always have extras in the okay. office. Don't let them fool you. They've got extras. So somebody might have a hookup in there. Yeah. Let's, all right. Let's let, maybe we should send out some feelers for that. I like that they're giving it away at the game. Cause I didn't know where you're going with this post bobbleheads for me, man. They just gotten too damn expensive piece. They're like seven, like 60 to $80 nowadays. But I like that they're staying, sticking true to the bobblehead and the, the origin of the bobblehead for me, it was a game day giveaway. That was yeah. the power of the bobblehead. It was a game day thing. You went to the game and you went home with the awesome bobblehead. Sometimes they weren't the prettiest, but it's okay. It was free. And you had your butt in the seat and you had a bobblehead. This whole thing where we've got like uh, some companies selling bobbleheads for 80 to 100 some dollars. I mean, whoo, dang. I'm not, I'm not there. I yeah, can't do that. No, I don't care for those bobbleheads either. I'm not paying that much for a bobblehead, although they are usually a lot more high quality than the free ones, like you said. But yeah, for it, sure, it's not, not the true spirit of the bobblehead. No, no, <clears> certainly <throat> not. Um, okay, well, uh, let's uh, go to a gentleman that has been starting to make heads bobble or make heads turn, shall we say? And that man is Jalen Suggs. I have this post from. Uh, this is from who do is it? Ty Knowles. At NBA. Tyler Han 14, Jalen Suggs is that dude, man, and he is reposting uh, a post from NBA University, which is a shot chart of the most efficient shooters by zone in the 23-24 season. And in that uh, that right, I don't know, what would you call that area? Just the three-point line above above the break there? on the left or right-hand side, depending on where you look at it, I guess the right-hand side, stage right. Uh, we got Jalen Suggs, who is shooting from that spot a clean 48.9% from there. Holy crap. The NBA average from that spot is 36.5. I mean, it. I can't say enough about Jalen Suggs' progression this year as a shooter. I mean, we all know what he was as a defender from pretty much the moment he stepped on the NBA floor. You knew he was going to be that dog. He's kind of molded in that Marcus Smart, I'm going to get after you, or a guy that kicked our ass last night, Josh Hart, right? These guys that just compete, 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 want to get in the shorts of their opponent and just wreak havoc all night long. And he has been a tremendous point of attack defender. I think he's... I was looking it up yesterday in terms of defensive rating. He's in like the top five in the NBA in guards, and he's got the best defensive rating on our team. He is just tremendous. Oh, I'm sorry, that's a lie. J Jonathan Isaac does. Um, but I was looking at guys who had played a certain amount of games. That's why J.I. wasn't on that list. Uh, in terms of his progression, though, offensively, I mean, first year, there was all types of troubles, Peach. He was just over dribbling, getting himself into the lane without an, a plan B and lots of turnovers. This year, he's settled into the role that we need, which is floor spacing, which we really needed last night. And he is shooting 39.3% from beyond the arc this year. I mean, that is super impressive. Um, his, his volume right now, where is his per game? Uh, where is the per game? Thank you right there. He's shooting five attempts. Per game, that's our that's our highest for anyone on the team. We need more of that volume. Five point two attempts. He's making two point one again for thirty nine point three percent from beyond the arc, and it just looks good. You can see that that has the ability to to continue to go up, and you know he can be a plus forty percent three point shooter for years to come. Peach, I'm just stoked beyond belief of what we've seen from any and the other thing about Jalen is he'll also take that last shot so it's like it, he's really in conversations now as people are talking about the magic they're starting to talk about a big three with Paulo Franz and now Jalen and you didn't hear that last year last year it was like well we don't really know about Jalen is he going to be kind of a bust people not, I mean not necessarily people within the community but people on the fringe and outside certainly were like ah 
was that the wrong pick? The Magic kind of flubbed that up. Um, the Raptors fans are like, should have taken Scotty Barnes. Well, not not anymore. We've got a foundational piece. He's a core guy. Uh, and, yeah, maybe the Magic do have a big three with, with Jalen Suggs here. How are you feeling, sir? I mean, an impromptu um, starter backup bench would be which Magic rookie, you know, has shown more growth mm. in his first couple of years. <clears throat> For Oof. me, the starter is Jalen Suggs. Yeah. I mean, we knew Paulo was good out the gate. You know, we may not have known who Franz was, but Franz was Franz from day one, right? Like, yeah. he's gotten better, but he hasn't changed from a guy that might not start to an, a full-blown starter like Suggs has. Right. Many guys, when they come in the league, struggle with that outside shot. It's a little further away. They they take their time, and that was one of the things we saw in Jalen's early years, and we talked about it on the show. He needs to slow down. He's trying to force stuff. When he was injured and he was sitting on the bench watching the game with Mosley, he got a lot out of that. And You could tell when he would come back, he was a different player. He was slowing down. He was letting the things come to him. He was taking what people gave him instead of forcing it all the time. And it's really improved his game. I don't think I've seen a player improve his game more on the Orlando Magic in the last three or four years than him. And that doesn't mean he's our best player. I'm just saying from what I saw on day one to where he's at now, that is the most improvement I've seen from a player. And and you love to see it. You have to have that when you're rebuilding. You got to have some high draft picks. You have to have some guys develop and hit that hit that bump up. We've got some stars. We've got some complimentary stars. Suggs could become a star before it's all said and done. Right now they're looking at him as complimentary, but in another year or so, he could be one of the names that's always mentioned. Yeah. No, I mean that it, it's tracking right now. As you said, if it the the growth in, uh, continues, the growth flower continues for Jalen Suggs. There's no telling, man, because he has the mindset too. He's just like head down, lunch pail type of dude, you know, always giving credit to other people, which you love to see. <laughs> um, and and another, you know, a, a guy that I have here on the next slide, Markel Fultz, he has supplanted him as the starter now. Like Mosley's been running that starting lineup with Jalen Suggs and Gary Harris as the guards to give increase the spacing around Paulo and Franz, who operate mostly, you know, in the paint. So that that's that's what we have here. This is uh, from Orlando Tragic, transitioning into the Markel Fultz post. Um, kind of the dichotomy of what the Markel Fultz experience has been for me and many fans. There are times when. Uh, People are yelling, no, Markel is in the future. Why do you cheer for him? And then you're like, ooh, that was a tough lay, Kel. Like these crazy acrobatic layups and getting into the rim. So it, it the you know, the jury is out a little bit on Markel Fultz, and it's sad. It's it's sad for me. I, I have behind me, I, I changed the uh the jersey. I had Franz Wagner up here for the longest, that autograph Franz Wagner you got me. And now I have the uh the Markel Fultz jersey, but it's actually a Mikel Petrus jersey now because it's signed by Mikel Petrus. So if you don't show anyone the back, <laughs> that is a Mikel Petrus jersey, but it's a Markel Fultz jersey. Um, and I got that jersey because I just love to see that dude play. And it's been kind of tough. He's been struggling significantly um, in, you know, since he's come back and as in this role as the bench uh, point guard that hasn't really been meshing that well with uh, Cole Anthony and I'm interested to see like I'm interested to see what happens with Markel in this offseason and with the contract and, and how that all plays out because things are precarious right now for him um, and I I know some people out there in the magic community are like you can't like on on the contrary to Orlando Tragic's post, I think there's sometimes some pushback against like, oh, you can't say, you know, who's better, Franz or Paulo? Stop trying to rank our guys or like stop being negative about – it's not being negative, man. It's being, hey, this is what we have to think about. Who are the foundational pieces? Do you have a max contract guy? Do you not? Who are going to be the complementary pieces, as you said, Peach? Is Markel complementary to this team because – He's looked a little lost, and a lot of that is him being injured. The terminal outlet syndrome stuff, you can see. His shot is starting to look better, but he still doesn't have any spacing there. 
And is he a player that is going to continue with this team and continue to grow at, in that bench role? It hasn't looked good from the start, but it's just started. So I'll, I'll, I'll withhold judgment, but I am worried, Peach. I am worried, and I, I, I want to say – it's been – I've been more on the, the left-hand side of this. I'm sorry. I like You've to been rant. worried about it. I You've know. been worried about it for a long time. And, I know. And it's weird because when you, when you – especially when you buy a jersey, you do kind of invest in a player, right? Like you're right. assuming he's going to be there for a long time. Like when you and I were splitting up some of the stuff for the studio, the decor stuff, mm -hmm. you know, I can see him. He's right behind you right now. The Mark L. Fultz bobblehead stayed with you. Yeah. And I took the Jalen Suggs bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know now I, we, we did that more because i knew you were big on big on kel but i feel like my bet won <laughs> or is winning but yeah. honestly we need a, we need us both to win because we're all on right. the same team here you want mm -hmm. to start your conversations about who's a better player paulo or franz and getting an argument about it well isn't it great that you can have that argument because yeah. there's been so many years in the past where it's like our best player is clear or it really isn't clear because we don't have a good one so it's a good problem to have you know I, Markel, I just don't feel like he's going to fit on this team long term unless he takes a huge pay cut to stay, right. which I think is a possibility. And he's going to have to look at probably being that backup guy. Um, yeah. He'll have to try to find a way to make that role work for him. And it may not. He may feel like, oh, I'm healthy. I'm good to go. I can start somewhere else. And if he wants to test the market, there's probably somebody that will overpay him to, to maybe yeah. possibly start. Yeah, I don't Maybe. know if there is anymore. I mean, looking at his last fifteen, uh, last uh, I guess eleven games, Peach, he's uh, averaging seven point one points on forty four percent from the field, fourteen percent from three, uh, two assists to one point three turnovers. That's not a good ratio for a guy who's supposed I, I know, to be a but like guard. if if he was going to sit on our bench for like league minimum, and somebody yeah, else is going to sure. give him two hundred thousand yeah. dollars more. He, right. And he might get to play more there. Then maybe he's going to take that chance. Uh, so yeah. I think you need to start. I understand, you know, you, you put some chips in right. on this hand, but I think I you know. need to start preparing that, you know, the other guy's got a full boat and you're, you're not, you're not taking your chips. And, and I guess that's what I'm trying to do right now. Second cousins. Like I'm just sharing this out loud that I am, I'm, I am worried about Markel and how he's fitting in off the, with that bench role. It doesn't look good. And another reason I'm worried about his future and whether he continues with this team is because that other guy that we drafted number six overall, who brings a lot of similar things to the table um, as a 6'9 point guard who defends really well, above average defender, is Anthony Black. And something that we didn't think was going to be a part of Anthony Black's repertoire was what Welt God mentions here, two thumbs up. If you're 40% from three and a 6'7 rookie, I thought he was a little bit more like 6'9". He's tall. He's big. He's a big guy, all right? But um, Anthony Black has been certainly a, a nice surprise in terms of his shooting from beyond the arc. Um, shooting 40% from beyond the arc on the year in his last 15 games. He's actually shooting 45% from beyond the arc. I mean, it's on 1.7 attempts, so let's not get carried away here. But if our best players, Paulo and Franz, do their work in the mid-range and at the at the hoop, you want guys that at least are a threat to take the shot. I mean, I'm not, I'm going to keep talking about this Knicks game. It looks like everyone was reluctant to shoot from beyond the arc yesterday. All right, we need guys who will pull the trigger and shoot the damn ball. And at least mm -hmm. Anthony Black has stepped up. It's not a quick shot. It's a slow shot. It's a set shot. But it's a shot that goes in, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. And if he can you know, continue to tick up his attempts and his volume, well, he brings a lot, a lot to the table. Um, I, honestly, I, think, I thought he I, was going to bring more playmaking, but like you said, rookie years, rookies all, often suck. You know, rookie years for guys, they suck sometimes because it's tough. It's a tough thing to do. It's a tough adjustment. Especially Philip Rossman, guards. Especially yeah, for especially. Guards. And and Philip Rossman Reich always says, like, yeah, rookie years are just a wash a lot of times for guys. They're just getting used to it. And that's a and Anthony Black during that time has still been playing really damn well. So that makes Markel's spot more precarious, but this is about A B beyond beyond stoked for what we've seen from Anthony Black I, in the limited the, minutes he's gotten. 
the part of the well god post i thought you'd like the most was the caption that reads anthony black looks like a pokemon that's the pre-evolution form of paulo <laughs> bangero <laughs> Damn, I actually cut that out. It's not even when I took the screenshot. I oh, well, that's that. what it says. That's okay, what well, it says, good. everybody. <laughs> well, I'm sure Cole Anthony would like that. I, I was a big Pokemon fan back in the day, but I mean, yeah, sure. Let's go. A, a big a, a, a big guard who can handle the rock better than most guys his size. Yeah, he does. With the braids, a little bit pre-evolution, Paulo Bencaro, sure. Is he going to grow two more inches and put on 60 more pounds and <laughs> start to be Woo! dominant? Bulbasaur, get it. That's a Pokemon, right? Yeah. Can I do it? <laughs> Bulbasaur. All right. Okay. We're moving it right along. Um, okay. This is a little time. It's it's a little time for some more. It's love, Peach. Wait, Moritz. wait. Did you say the old dude? Did you talk about the old dude's post in regards to AB? No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't even think I have uh oh I yeah I don't have that uh loaded up. I just went with uh All Oh right. god. You see this is what happens. Like, well, I thought we were going to this, which is why I yeah. didn't say it in my take, but like okay, go for it. this is what what we're seeing at A B is exactly mm -hmm. like old dude says here, which is books bands life. Yeah. Uh, on, on Twitter. He, he says every time AB sinks a, a three, a draft night take is deleted from history. And I mean, look, we're a little guilty of that too. We're sort of questioning yep. what is this guy doing? What's he about? Mm -hmm. I think you question it more because of your love for Kel and thinking, yes. well, this is called space. So how could this guy even get time? Right. But like, like they saw that what he could become. And, and I think they would probably be very pleased with where he's at in his first year for the amount of time he's seeing and what he's doing. You, you got to like it. You got to figure that their best is yet to come from him. And that's that's a scary thought for the rest of the league. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. A, B, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're just going to. That is blood moving. type too? Or? <laughs> <laughs> so now it's time for some more. It's Wagner love. Um, at the beginning of the year, there was a, some chatter. You know, we had Cole Anthony and Moritz both playing their faces off and they were getting six man hype and pub, but that kind of went away. But now salty magic 91 is bringing it back. And he says, I've got a very nasty agenda to push given all the norm Powell six man of the year. Talk uh, media keep forcing, forcing on a the media keeps forcing on us. So he, um, he has done a side by side here comparison of Norman Powell, who is, kind of like the runaway six man of the year right now um, for the Clippers and our Moritz Wagner. And you can see a lot of the green, if you're watching here on YouTube, is in Moritz's favor. Yeah, Norm Powell has you know two more points per game, but uh, Moritz gets more rebound, gets more boards, has more assists, has well the same amount of steals and blocks per game, has a better field goal percentage. Norm Powell is shooting lights out from beyond three, 46, 45.6%. That's where there's a huge difference. You know, Moritz hasn't taken much volume. He's shooting right about 32%. So that is, that's pretty significant, but Moritz's effective field goal percentage is better. He's taking more efficient shots for him. Um, and that's really, if you look at their per 36 numbers, because it's not apples to apples, Norm gets more minutes per game than Moritz. Moritz actually scores more if you look at, apples to apples per 36 minutes. He scores like 22 right. and Norm only gets 19. So, you know. I, right, because he also leads in BPM and VORP, which are yeah. very important. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, where, where Norm Powell leads in, in this is that their team is better. So they're going to get more pub, right? They're playing in a bigger market as well, and he leads in that all-important points per game. So I, yeah. I, I don't see that. I, I'm not sure. I don't see this argument. It's not. <laughs> it's not valid until we're one of the top teams in the Eastern conference. Um, and while we are in that, you know, five or six best, I think the Clippers are in the, you know, top two or three in the West. So right. I, I, I don't see this as a fair comparison, honestly. Yeah. No, I'm team, he, I'm team pal in this one. he's doing, he's doing the, the thing that all magic fans, you know, you're, you're planting your flag. You're, you're pushing the propaganda as you, as you yeah. should. And that's fair. And I love you some more. It's don't get yeah. me wrong. No, Peach has a very I would love for this and, to be, an honest take. I here. would love for this to be true, but like he needs to get that points per game up. Yeah. And Norman Powell's three point shooting percentage needs to go down. Like <laughs> there needs to be some some change here. He needs more minutes. Right. And he's just he's just not gonna get the time that is required to to do that. But 
Um, I will say, you know, I, I watched I watched one game. I watched the Charlotte game mostly from the opposing broadcast, which you sometimes like to do. It's Del Curry. He's pretty good on the mic. And uh, they he was just singing Moritz's praises. You know, Moritz has had some big games here. I mean, he's carried us through some games. And he's just that – we were talking about Jalen Suggs, that kind of tenacious competitor. And that's Moritz Wagner too. Like he is – he is a bee in everyone's bonnet. I mean, 18 points against the Cavs. That was a big reason that we won that. 16 points against the Pistons. Yeah, he's only averaging 11 on the year, but it's not unusual for Moritz to come out and have a huge impact on the game. Moritz is, for me, he's that bench player, that type of bench player that you want. It, he maybe isn't going to be the most consistent. He, he's not going to give you maybe 10 to 12 every night. He might give you like six one night, but then another night he's going to give you 18. And he's going to completely change the dynamic of a game. And he's going to he's going to he's frustrate the people. Ross. What's that? <laughs> he's the new Terrence Ross. <laughs> yeah, the German. Sometimes he, he doesn't do anything. And other times he goes for 20. <laughs> right, right. And, and But I think where it's a little different is Moritz always does something because he's always pissing people off. He, he always he always brings that and so yeah while the sixth man of the year talk is probably overhyped because he's not going to get the minutes um and the points he like at least got a new nickname from this segment he is now the german torch get it going the german torch explain that german torch the german, german torch oh, okay. and he's the torch okay yeah that's great i love it i love it okay um let's see here all let's right go to the fan yeah all right yeah let's get on the phone lines let's uh welcome in ty for five with the fam so happy to be joined by our second cousin ty thanks for coming on the show for five with the fam ty it's good to have you here man no problem thank you for inviting me i'm uh i'm always excited to, to be part of any kind of magic orlando magic community so Amen. thank you for inviting me absolutely sir thank you for being with us so you know a guest, a second cousin. We care how you're doing, Ty. So we need you to check in. We already checked in earlier in the show, but how are you doing, Ty, for the psychological oh, check-in, sir? You had me get a picture for feeling, you. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good. Yeah. Good, good, uh, good. Where we at? Good that we're uh, not only chasing the playoffs, but we're well in it. So. <laughs> So um, you you live um, and die by this team. The way that the team is going is how you're feeling. Because it is a social emotional right. check in. Ty, I want to know how you're doing. Really, I, I think us men we don't talk about it enough. Okay, we don't we don't we don't we don't get vulnerable. But you're telling me right now that the way the magic go on the court is a lot of the way that Ty goes into this world at times. Pretty much, uh, <laughs> from my girlfriend to. Uh, my my siblings and workmates they know uh, what kind of mood I am depending if Orlando Magic won or not <laughs> and how bad <laughs> they might have lost <laughs> it might have affected even more. Oh man, yeah, I've definitely been there. So did you turn off the Knicks game before it ended too, or was that just me? Were you able to watch it, Ty? The whole thing. I I made it to halftime. <laughs> I put it that way. <laughs> I made it to halftime and I kept glancing at it. Uh, I cried a little in the corner. <laughs> Um, yes. I thought about all the time I'm going to hear bing bong when I go to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because so, you're down in Orlando. I was, uh, I was not in good sorts the last few days. You're down in Orlando and there's a lot of New Yorkers down there. Yes. It's an infestation. Sorry, my New Yorkers, but, uh, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the way that five with a fam works is we're going to ask Ty a question and then Ty is going to ask Peach and I a question. And since uh, we all woke up today with an hour less sleep springing the, the clocks forward for daylight savings time, when are we going to get rid of this? The farmers don't want it. No one wants it. But anyways, <laughs> don't get me started. Okay. All right. It's too much. That's a <laughs> tangent. We're not going there, but the, the clocks went forward. We lost an hour of sleep. Paul Anthony facts. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to ask you a turning the clock forward question, Ty. When you, for you, who is the biggest yeah. difference maker on the magic besides Paulo? When you spin this team forward, when you turn the clocks forward on this team, who's the biggest difference maker for you? And we're going to take Paulo out of it. Just, I don't know. I, w I want that discussion. 
I kind of cheated a little bit on this. Uh, now I'm thinking about it. Uh, I think you went dark, forward in the future with a time um, machine and figured out the answer. <laughs> he knows he's yeah. from the future. <laughs> How do you cheat? And then... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm cheating in the sense uh, that I'm. You're th- maybe y'all want to zero in on one player, but I'm thinking it's the whole our guards as a whole. Though. So um, okay. I believe, uh, well, it starts with Jalen Suggs, uh, point attack defense or whatever, and, and whatnot. So I believe um, as he goes and he's hitting shots, we're good to go, um, along with the other guards when they come into play. So I think if we uh, clean up that and clean up the, the turnovers and the taking care of the ball and, and knowing what to do, when to do it, we're, we're going to be all right. We're going to go, um, we're going to hit second round for sure, depending on who we pay. Ooh, he's claiming it, Peach. He's putting his flag in the ground. Second round of the playoffs. You heard yep. it here. I'll plant this German flag right here for a second round of the playoffs. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I, I believe we can do it. Yep. You have to have that kind of mindset, right? Like when you, when your team's going to make the playoffs, if you're you know, not the team that sneaks in at seven or eight, then you, you have to kind of feel like a second round is possible. Um, I if, if, right. if we're going to answer this question, Kyle, I'm just going to be quick with mine. You can get okay. the German flag back out. It's Franz <laughs> Wagner. Here. Like, I mean, we know Paulo's going to bring it. We know Franz. <laughs> when Franz is cooking and Paulo's cooking, mm. man, we're we have we're hard to stop. It makes it easier mm. for the other guys too to do what they do if both those right. guys are cooking. But I want to see him get into the bucket. Reminded me like Heydu Turkoglu in his prime back Ooh. in the day, where he could just get a bucket no matter what. You put the ball in his hands. You let him do yep. things. Franz can be that kind a guy but some games he just feels like he doesn't have it and he doesn't quite do it as much if he's cooking we can definitely make the second round france he just needs to get angry mm. and, and 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 start uh start de- demanding it and 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 going for it you notice when he gets angry he's dunking on people he, <sighs> he's going in he's going up with conviction or whatever so we, we I, need, I, I definitely agree with uh pieces take we yeah. need like a jekyll and hyde situation with franz or like a Hulk situation, every time he gets a scratch, yes. he, he gets enraged. If he gets a scrape on the arm. So we need to like pre-cut this man. Like, cut me. Like in a boxing match. Like, cut me. <laughs> and then just send him on in there all fucking crazy franz out. I'd be lying if I, you know, Franz is one of my favorite players on this team. Um, and I, I'd be lying, though, if it, I wasn't a little concerned. The three-point shooting has definitely been ticking, regressed this year from where it was last year. I think he's like just about 30% this year. Um, and I, you know, I was looking back through some highlights from last season and I, where's that Dirk fadeaway that we were seeing a little bit of, you know, where did that go? We were seeing the, the step back threes confidently. That's kind of gone away. So Peach, I totally think that Franz is the difference maker. Is he going to step up and be that second guy? We'll, we'll see. I, I think he still obviously has it. He's, he can get to the rim and, and it's in there, but um, you know, um, right. it, progress is not a straight line, right, folks? So I have the utmost confidence in Franz. And, and you were talking about Jalen Suggs, Ty. We had earlier in this show a whole, you know, diatribe on how impressed we are with Jalen Suggs. And you talked about the shooting, how he's, you know, shooting. He's one of the best in the league from that uh, beyond the arc, like 46% from one of the spots beyond the arc, pretty mm-hmm. much 40% on the year. So. I, I'm with you. I'm with you guys. Both. Both are good answers. I'm not going to take a side. We'll let the second cousins in the in the uh, comments take a side. So who, who's your no, who's yeah, your biggest yeah. difference maker he, in the comments? He's definitely won me over. <laughs> Don't give in that easy. He's Don't give in that easy. Over. I like Suggs. Suggs could end up. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't over. be crazy to me runs, if he if he ends up being a more important player. Shot, that's all. Yeah. Well, right. It doesn't. It seems like something is slightly off with the shot, but. Let us know what you think. Now, Ty, do you have a question, magic related or other, for us? You know what? My my only question is, uh, I want more of you. So how <laughs> can I get more of you? Uh, more, 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 more for you. You know, like I said, I'm I'm very big into Orlando Magic community, so uh, you're gonna probably see me on all the podcasts. But you know, y'all are definitely one of my favorites. I, it feels like uh, family. It feels like I am a cousin. You know. Yes. Never mind the skin. <laughs> a second cousin you know or it's not you know it's all <laughs> so uh I, I just want to know what i can look forward to well you know i appreciate that uh, i feel like, like that was like a, 
yeah. Uh, for Coast Park Cousins Night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear, listeners, we did not plant Ty with this question here. But, um, Ty, you can get more of us. Definitely come through to yeah, Court Cousins here. Night. You, Cor- <laughs> well, Ty actually won the free ticket, Peach. Ty will be at Court Cousins Night. He was the Patreon that won the free ticket giveaway. Why are you Three. acting surprised, Ty? I text this wow. to you, but I love it. He's doing it for the I am. He's doing it for the video. <laughs> it still hasn't hit. <laughs> it still hasn't hit. <laughs> yeah, we hope to see everyone out at that. Um but uh we're you know, we're we're trying to do as much as we can. If you're over on the Patreon, there's like some outtakes that are silly. We might have a couple outtakes from this segment, especially when Ty was uh crapping on New Yorkers, you know, as uh, as we love to do here. <laughs> I can do it. My girlfriend's from New York. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does that call? Is she a Knicks fan? Does she? Is she like no, a basketball fan? I want her over. You want her over? Smart man. She's on the dark side now. No, that, that's the light side. We're. we're... That Knicks, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thanks so much, Ty. We're excited to see you down uh, down in Orlando with everyone else. And um, okay. yeah, we'll catch you soon, man. See you soon. Again, I appreciate it. If y'all haven't subscribed, please subscribe to these guys. They're it. I swear. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yo, you can get Ty on the show more often. Thank you, Ty, for joining us. It was a great time hanging out with you. If you'd like to come on the show or have that opportunity, go join us over on the Patreon, support the show, and maybe you can be Ty next time. All right, it's time. It's that time for the large ending. Before we do, another shout out to those Patreons. Uh, Magic Player History, Bolby the Dom, Paulo and Franz's Warmth, Dylan Holden, Drum Drum, Drummy Drum Drum Drum, D, Matthew Bell, Dan Young, Gloria Damien, and Connor. Thank you very much. You looking for the button, Peach? Where is it? I'm already looking. Well, I did a little remodeling back here, so I'm not okay. really sure exactly where you it misplaced is. misplaced it. But, oh, there, there it is. It's in here. Got it. Okay, here we go, right into the large ending. Peach, I believe you are first on this. Yes, the uh, Magic uh, Social Media Squad giving us one of the uh, copper drops. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I posed the question to you. I'm not sure if you've seen these trout. I believe it's a trout slider yeah. uh, or, or sandal type of thing. Uh, yeah. They're calling them, kids are calling them slides now. Have you seen these? Did you see this video? I didn't see what the is video yet. Yeah, I'm going to go check it out. Um, I'm, not like a, I'm not a slides guy. I know you might be. You are. You are I do see you rocking the slide, the sandal, the chancleta. So you might be into this. I'm not a big fisherman, although I am in aquaponics, so hit me up in a year when I'm farming tilapia out of my basement, and maybe I could get into these. Oh, man. I wouldn't want to eat anything come out of your basement, bud. <laughs> I'm already um, eating salad, doc. It's already happening. It's a, it's a drop for me. Uh, okay. Yeah, they're just, they're just weird. They don't match anything. I don't have a lot of fish gear. I guess if I was going fishing, maybe, but yeah, there you go. I don't really do a lot of fish. But you don't want to open toe a sandal. I mean, you get a hook in there, and that'll be mean. That'll be ugly. That's a good point. That's a good point. It's dangerous. <laughs> uh, well, Peach, I think it's been done now. The Broncos have waved Wilson. Uh, all the news stories, it's done. All right, he's wa- Peach is waving goodbye as well. I mean, you, you're you're happy about this, but he, this trade also just like kind of screwed this franchise up for the next few years. What are your yep. feelings here? Uh, putting a closing the We're book dead. on the Russell Wilson uh, chapter of the Broncos. Well, it was a complete fire sale. They also got rid of Justin Simmons this week, which was just ridiculous. And uh, uh, yeah, I think I woke up the other day, and even with the Bills dropping some guys, I realized that the only I only have one current football player jersey of my two favorite teams now, based on all the drops that they just did over the last few days. Ooh. But waving Wilson and just starting over is the way to go. The Broncos went from a team that was going to have negative cap space, and now we've got $20 million in room for some reason. So a lot of moves oh. were made. Some of them were really aggressive and over the top, but I think they just feel like with the coach they have that they just need to start fresh. And instead of clinging on to what was there, they're just like, let's just start over. Okay. It can't go much worse. So <laughs> hopefully it, it'll be better. It, it's an approach. Uh, next thing I have written up here on our large ending screen is I've actually written the written a word backwards, which I know okay. you don't know what it is. It's but it's noticing. And I did that on purpose because clearly you're not noticing, as seen on our last Magic Hornets reaction video, uh-huh. the gentlemen on it are backwards. 
<laughs> I noticed it immediately when I popped up my YouTube. I was like, oh, cool. Jay and Kyle did a did a game reaction. But why is Brandon Miller, Nicole Anthony backwards? Because <laughs> he doesn't notice that kind of thing. Did you? Are you just noticing this now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How do you not see that? <laughs> Well, um, shout out to Jay. Shout out to his step pops, the mailman who's been delivering, who delivered Jay to us. Thank you so much for putting us in contact. He's been helping out with the show, getting on, doing reactions. And he also is making graphics like this. But I guess he, he also didn't notice. But when you flip the, he probably flipped the image. Oh, this is on him. All right. Yeah. He yeah. flipped the image to make it work the way he wanted. And uh, yeah, the jerseys I see now were the. Kiag, kiagamam, kiagam. Okay. Sigam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a bit of sad news. Akira Toriyama of the Dragon Ball Z creator fame dies. I don't. I know that you're not really into anime, and I'm not. I'm pretty sure you were never into Dragon Ball Z because it was kind of after your time. But I did want to ask you about what was your most formative cartoon as a kid. Yeah, I was more of a Dragon Ball Y guy, so I was yeah. more of a um, I, I think uh, I was big into Voltron and Transformers, which I think you've seen. Those are mm-hmm. some of my, as far as a cartoon goes, some yeah. of the big connectors. I, I think I watched a lot of G.I. Joe, but I didn't have a lot of the toys. But there was that kind of like... There was like a two-hour gap where you got like you know Transformers and GI Joe and and one, at one point they did a crossover. It was I mean those are that's where I'm at on that. But yeah, it's oh, too yeah. bad that I, I feel like anime comes up with wrestling sometimes. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of crossover between those two worlds. So anything I know is usually because of that got crossover. It. Got it. Well, yeah, a lot of yeah, my friends more of an Akira Tozawa. I wasn't, but I mean, anime, this guy, anime is huge now. The kids, like, it's everything. Mm-hmm. And Dragon Ball Z, I guess maybe Pokemon slightly, was Pokemon slightly before, but that really was the yeah. door opening of many Americans to anime, so I'm I sure. think technically Voltron was anime, and I think oh, Speed yeah. Racer was probably some oh, of the yeah, first yeah, main true, true. popular uh, animes to come over. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a different style of cartoon, but it's right. still kind of cartoon. I'm right. Not a lot of cartoons anymore yeah. <laughs> okay all right i gotta ask it mm-hmm. caitlin clark do you know who that person is yeah she's the iowa basketball player who set the most uh points for uh any ncaa all right. player all right all right you got it <laughs> see i don't know i stop it i wasn't sure i was like i wonder if he'll know who she is <laughs> i mean she's kind of everywhere which right. is kind of honestly a little annoying to me because i'm like well i mean enjoy your moment in the sun but like once you get to the WNBA, we'll forget about you. But she's doing a hell of a job. I, I, she seems like when, when she got hit by that fan when they stormed the court, it seemed like a little bit like, hey, uh, you didn't need to take a flop there. You're not in the WWE. But, uh, yeah, I mean, impressive what she's doing. But people seem to think that she's going to, like, change the women's game or get people to care at the next level. And I'm just like, all right, well, it's, prove it. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I mean... They're we'll already see. selling a lot of That's season tickets in Indiana for, for their team because they got the number one pick. We'll see. I'm not going to watch WNBA games yet. Although maybe you could get me to go to the, the Connecticut Sun if someone – I almost went to a game last year. I'm getting closer. <laughs> you can almost always get me to go to a sporting event at least once, but, like, that's right. not really going to change the needle for the WNBA that, like, people go once in a while. But it might be big for the Indiana market, which I don't know how Maybe big it is Maybe we need right to now. just, like, force our hand, Fish, and like, because I do like that it happens, the WNBA happens in the summer, and summer is just, yes. like, dry of right. sports. So maybe we Agreed. need to start, you know, Court Cousins offshoot WNBA. We got to pick a team, and let's just go, man. And I got to bring back the miracle. The Orlando Miracle was at one point the, the WNBA team there, and, and yeah, I don't know. We, I mean, I got the Dallas Wings here in town. Okay, let's do it. Shit, I'm down. Their tickets are too expensive, though. They need to lower their ticket prices. They're always wondering why they can't get people in. But like, when you start to go to some of these smaller, like, I'm going to try to go to an ECHL game later, which is like the third tier hockey. But right. the tickets are cheap, right? Yeah. Like, if you can get into an event for ten bucks, then you'll have people in the stands. But right. if you make the ticket. 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks to sit in the upper sections. I'm not going to right. watch WWE. Like you got to make it affordable that. for me to get in. Yeah, let me get in and then I'll buy a beer and I'll get some a hot dog and I'll 
patronize the concessions and you'll make money off me there. You want your players to make equal wages to what the men are making, but your league has to make that money first and you have to fill the buildings to start making that money. So you have to build a fan interest first before right. you start asking them to put 70 bucks to come watch it. Yeah. Seems like basic business. I don't know who. I, why am I telling you? You you know you went to school for this shit. Come on. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm an English major, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So Anthony Joshua knocked out Francis Ngannou in uh, a recent heavyweight boxing bout. Um. I'm not gonna ask. I don't. Yeah. That's new news to you. I'm asking you. I'm just saying that it was news that came across my feed. I'm, I saw and I thought, I wonder what Peach's favorite non-major sport is. And I couldn't really think of it, what it would be off the top of my head, outside the four majors. So hockey and basketball included, and football, no, those are off the table, baseball. What, what's your, do you watch a sport? Would you be interested in, like, is it curling? What are you, what high lie? What are we, what are we doing, Peach? I'm soccer. It's not soccer, is it? Can't be. I mean, I don't even watch the four majors enough to like <laughs> expand into some other non-major. Like, right, if well, I had more hours a day, I'd spend more time with the big four than I would with with, okay, uh, let with me an give outlier. You... I, I like watching tennis. Okay. Occasionally, I'll give you that. Right. Uh, there's definitely a lot of those non-majors that I don't even know how they televise it. Golf. I mean, just go golf if you want to golf don't watch some other guys golf like what the hell good is that like sitting inside watching other men outside doing activity like that like just go golf yourself like i don't get there's a whole channel for golf i'm like who's watching this i don't get it well the WNBA needs to talk to them because they've done it <laughs> <laughs> all right uh that's all and we've for, done it uh, I'm, and i've done it and we've done it we've all done it we've done the we've done the show um thanks we've for thanks for coming around second cousins please like and subscribe thanks for watching we hope to see you down in orlando thursday march 21st it's gonna be a great time hit us up on the socials even if you don't come to the game if you want to hang if you want to take us to your favorite restaurant if you want to point us in this in the direction of something we need to do while we're there. We're, we're neophytes. We're looking for, we're, we're looking for ideas. So can't wait to see you down there. Peace. Only 11 days, man. It's my lucky number. Uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. Love you, man. And uh, peace out second cousins. Say goodbye to the long beard. The short beard is coming to Orlando. Oh. Thanks for coming. Oh.